Today we would like to reflect on the faithfulness of God. That God is forever faithful and whatever he promises comes to pass. He never says and doesn't fulfill what he says. Whatever he says, he fulfills. He's not like a human being who's going to tell you one thing and forget immediately that they actually said that particular thing. It's not like a human being that will tell you that they will, they will help you and forget that they promised to help you. God always keeps his word. And this is evident when you look at the life of the Israelites, especially as they continue to traverse the desert up to the promised land. These people were unfaithful to the covenant, but God kept his word. He told them that I'll be your God and you'll be my people. I'm going to journey with you right from the beginning up to the promised land. And he did that. Many times they went astray. Many times they forgot about the covenant. Many times they embraced other gods, small gods that, that they found along the way. God, as we are told by the scriptures, but many times was, was angered by their transgression. But he never wanted them to perish in sinfulness. He never wanted them to perish in darkness. And so, as he promised them from the beginning that he was going to be with them up to the very end, God helped them even through their sinfulness to come back to himself. He reminded them about the importance of the covenant that he had with them. He sent them prophets, he sent them judges, he gave them good kings. He gave them a lot of things that helped them to be drawn back to himself. Yet they still continued to go astray. God has been faithful right from the inception of human history. God has always kept his word. Sometimes we want God to act in our lives immediately. Sometimes we want to give God an ultimatum. Sometimes we want something so badly that it should come almost immediately. But we forget that God does not act according to our reckoning of time. God, as they say, is totally other. God is transcendent. And so, if we are impatient, we might think that God does not keep his word. Maybe you are looking for employment and you want it just now. Maybe you are looking for marriage and you want it almost immediately. Maybe you are looking for a breakthrough in your life. Is it business? Is it a promotion? And you want it just now. And you have been praying over it. You've attended so many novenas. You've, you've done so many personal novenas and doesn't seem to be coming through. And because of that, your instinct tells you you're wasting your time. God is not going to answer your prayers. Maybe he's busy answering other people's prayers and he has, he has forgotten about you. And so you've, you stop praying and you begin to seek solutions elsewhere. But today I want to be reminded that he, if we want to experience the faithfulness of God, we have to be patient, not only with ourselves, but also with God himself. Whatever we want shall come to pass. But one thing also that we need to know is that God is not, is not going to give you something that he sees maybe in future might harm you or might not be as good for you. You might think it is good for you. It is good to be employed now. But maybe God thinks it is not important that he gives you that employment now. Maybe you might need it tomorrow or the other day, not today. But because we are not able to think through this mysterious God, this transcendent God, we don't appreciate his faithfulness. And so we become impatient and we give up that easily. Today we were reminded that God is always faithful. And we have to continue knocking on that door, knocking and knocking until it opens. God wants to make a new covenant with these people. He tells them, you have failed in this old covenant. I gave you these precepts that I wrote on these two tablets of stone, but you have failed. But I'm not going to give up on you. I'm going to give you a new covenant. And this new covenant is not, is not going to have precepts that are going to be written on some tablet of stone. It is going to have precepts that will be written on your hearts. 
so that wherever you go, you go with these precepts. God promises that he's going to give his people a new covenant. When Christ comes, he comes to be the fulfillment of that promise. Christ becomes the new covenant for God's people. He comes to bridge the gap between God and the people. And Jesus says, now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now the hour has come for God's promises to, to come to pass. Jesus comes into human history to fulfill God's promises. As God gives us this new covenant with a new law that is enshrined on our heart, God also wants us to revisit our lives, to introspect, so to begin to walk with this new law, in this new covenant. God doesn't want us to cling to our old life. Because that old life is in the past. That old life is with the old covenant. God wants us to embrace the new covenant. The new covenant that comes with the new law. The new law that is not written on paper, that is not written on, on, on a stone, but written on our heart. And that, that new law can easily be seen in the self-sacrifice of Christ on the cross. The new law of love. The law of love. Love is a universal law. Wherever you go, this law applies the same way. Even the baby that is not yet born knows about this law of love, which is a very important law. And it is a law that can help us to reshape our lives, to reconstruct our family life, to reconstruct our world, to transform the way we relate with one another. Christ showed us how to express that love with one another through sacrifice. As we walk into this new covenant, God wants us to detest sin. God wants us to distance ourselves away, far away from the things that destroy our relationship with God himself, but also with one another. We can't walk, walk into the new covenant with the old self on our shoulders. We have to begin to shed off certain things that do not agree with the new life that we're invited to respond to or to walk in the new covenant. Are we ready to embrace this new law, this new covenant that God is showing us today, that God is giving us today? Are we ready to get rid of that particular activity that continues to distance us from God, that continues to destroy our relationship with God? Are we ready to let go of that element that obscures our vision of Christ, our vision of God's glory. Are we ready? Or do we still want to cling to that old life? We cannot walk into the new covenant while still holding on to things that do not agree with this new covenant. Christ says, now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, that a grain cannot bear fruit unless it is thrown into the soil that germinates and begins to bear that fruit. Christ is that grain that God is putting into the ground to bring about newness of life. Are we ready to join Christ as he goes down to the soil, to die a little, to sacrifice, so that as we germinate, as we grow, we may bring about newness to our environment, to our family life, to our world, to the whole human community? Are we ready to die to ourselves so that others may experience a fullness of life? Are we ready to sacrifice something that we love so much about ourselves so that others may be happy? God continues to promise his people. God continues to promise us that we will still be his people and we will still be our God. And in this promise, he brings Christ in the middle, in the center, as the beginning of the new covenant. And we're invited to get to walk into this new covenant and to walk with Christ while embracing the new law, the law of love, the law of sacrifice, killing ourselves a little for the sake of others. Amen.